Good afternoon, Nittany Lions Nation. Welcome in. Tyler Donahue here at landof10.com. I'm going to give everybody just a moment or two uh, to jump on board. Big recruiting news for the Penn State Nittany Lions. We know they're geared up for a huge matchup this weekend against Ohio State, a chance to assert themselves uh, even further in the national championship conversation. Uh, but we've got a major development on the recruiting trail. Again, just going to give it a few seconds here for everybody to, to join the audience. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about with, with the newest potential Nittany Lions player that just came aboard. And that is Taquan Roberson. Uh, DePaul Catholic High School quarterback, New Jersey. We've talked about how successful uh, the recruiting has been in the Garden State for Penn State. And they cash in again this afternoon, um, just about a half hour or less ago. Uh, Taquan Roberson announcing his commitment to the Penn State Nittany Lions. Donald Fisher right off the bat asked, how good is Taquan Roberson? Well, that's why we're all here. I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, this new Nittany Lions commitment during the show. But just some basics here on the background of this com commitment, how we got to this point uh, with Taquan Roberson coming to Penn State and being the second member of the 2019 Nittany Lions recruiting class. Um, so Roberson was on campus just a few days ago. He was one of the several big-time premier prospects who made the trip to Happy Valley uh, for the game against Michigan. Obviously, a lot of them liked what they saw. The fans liked what they saw. Um, it was a very uh, opportunistic environment for your recruiting efforts. Um, and, you know, so there you go. You figured that might have some ripple effects into the upcoming week, maybe convince some recruits that they're ready to make the commitment. And here we have the first one. Maybe this isn't the last one. Uh, but we have our first – post-Michigan, whiteout atmosphere commitment from Taquan Roberson. Again, a six-foot, 185-pound quarterback uh, from DePaul Catholic High School in New Jersey. This is one of the premier parochial programs on the football field in the state of New Jersey that he is leading. Um, a few different Division One prospects on this team. We've seen several come out in the past. Um, and another name to know on this, on this team is Ronnie Hickman. He's a four-star safety prospect who thinks very highly of Penn State. Um, perhaps this influences his recruitment down the road as he was also on campus uh, with Saquon Roberson uh, just a few days ago. Um, but continuing with some background, uh, Roberson really saw his recruitment rise this past offseason. He was kind of sharing duties, was not the full-time starter throughout his sophomore season at DePaul Catholic, but did enough, got enough film together, you know, put the evidence on tape where there were Power 5 teams interested in him just based on his sophomore season alone before he became the full throttle go-to guy for DePaul Catholic this this season. Um, got a chance to see him at a Penn State camp in mid-July. Um, definitely impressive kid. You know, he didn't stand out from the group as far as physical stature. Six foot, 185 pounds. The, the guy who did more of that was Garrett Schrader, uh, who was another Penn State target. And as I'll get into a little bit later here on our conversation, I believe he will still continue to be a target at quarterback for Penn State, six foot five uh, and, and 200 pounds. Obviously, that's going to be a little bit more eyeball test worthy than six foot 185, which is what we see from Roberson. But this is a guy who could clearly sling it during camp. Um, a lot of heat on, on the ball, um, but also a lot of touch, not just the guy who's pointing, firing. And, and that's where you get in trouble with guys who really struggle with accuracy, even a fastball up their sleeve. Um, you want that finesse to the passing game. You want that touch and especially the ability to do that on the move with a quarterback of this caliber is very impressive. So Taquan Roberson brings all that to the table. Um, he's played seven games this season for DePaul Catholic. And, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. This is a team that has already played against some of the best programs, not just in New Jersey, but in the Northeast overall. Um, you know, he, he's got to win against Paramus Catholic this year. He's got to win against Don Bosco this year. Um, a narrow loss against St. Peter's Prep. He's already played Bergen Catholic. These are all big-time programs across New Jersey that he is playing. So not a cupcake schedule. Just want to put that out there to start. Here's what he's done while leading DePaul Catholic through that schedule. A new Nittany Lions commit uh, to Quan Roberson this season. Seven games into it, he is completing 68% of his pass attempts. Uh, those have led to uh, 1,616 yards in seven games. That's an average of about 230 passing yards per game, which is a lot at the high school level. 18 touchdowns in the process to just four interceptions through those seven games. And then he also leads DePaul in rushing. 
Uh, he has 55 carries for uh, 340 yards this year. That's right around six yards per attempt. Uh, many of these plays are design rushes, but I'll tell you what, I would, I would anticipate the majority of his runs this year have not been on design. They've been uh, because the play dictated it that way, uh, because pressure uh, was applied in the backfield, and that's what I'm going to get to in a moment. So 22 total touchdowns for him on the season through seven games. Obviously, that's a number that pops out. Um, you know, th- three scores per contest, 22 touchdowns versus four interceptions. And again, throw in that 68% completion percentage. And you're really pleased with the development that you've seen from Taquan Roberson. I think a lot of us uh, in the recruiting industry, certainly those who are here, you know, and, and kind of monitoring the New Jersey area, you know, I'm from the New Jersey area, had a sense that this was going to be a breakout junior season for Taquan Roberson. And he has delivered. I mean, it's one thing to anticipate it. It's one thing to see the offers and and you can, you know, everyone's seen the potential in camp, but to go out there and kind of carve up these really quality defenses and a hard schedule like he has speaks volumes about the development we're seeing take place for Taquan Roberson, who, again, uh, committing today to Penn State University. Uh, big time commitment, one that we anticipated potentially because yesterday Roberson on Twitter uh, gives us all a heads up. He says, I- I'm ready to make a decision going to be committing in the next 48 hours. That, that tells you that there will be some kind of announcement from him before they hit the field for their Friday night game. Got word early this afternoon that it was probably going to happen today, sometime after school, after practice, and that's what we got today from Taquan Roberson uh, announcing via his Twitter uh, with a video that features him and members of the DePaul Catholic locker room yelling the we are. Um, so, you know, big moment for him. We've got a story up, uh, should be right below me here on Facebook uh, Live. Um, on our Facebook page, I would encourage you to go check out uh, the story I put together today uh, about Roberson, what he brings to the table, uh, the impact he makes on this 2019 recruiting class. We're going to talk about it right here, but um, if you want to file that away for later read, share that with your friends, go right ahead. Um, just kind of talking about what this second commitment of the 2019 class means and, and uh, you know, ultimately what Saquon Roberson could bring to the Indy Lions quarterback room when he becomes uh, a Penn State student athlete. Um, but, but to break down a little bit about who this kid is, I, I do see a lot of parallels to Trace McSorley. I think that's something you're going to hear ad nauseum uh, in this day or two as everyone's kind of reacting to the Roberson commitment. Because, look, those six foot, that's the obvious. You know, Trace McSorley – uh, for as tremendous as he's been at Penn State, um, and and for being an All Conference contender, I think I think shoot if if you know you could probably throw him in the top ten for Heisman at this point when you if you go down the list. Um, but he's six foot, you know that's an issue uh, that some coaches see. Some college staffs they'll really try to avoid players who aren't six two, six three, six four, six five. Um, Trace McSorley, it hasn't been a problem for him, and, and a big part of that is the ability to flush outside the pocket. Because when you're getting pressured, the worst thing you want to do, if you're a, not a, 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 if you're a smaller in stature at quarterback, you don't want to look up while you're being pressured and see the top of your linemen's backs standing in front of you or their helmets and you can't see over. The ability to go lateral, get beyond the pocket, there you can have a clear vantage point of what's developing down the field. And how many times have we seen Nick Shorley scramble to his left or to his right uh, and, and find an open receiver because he's able to buy that extra time? Go watch Saquon Roberson's uh, film, and, that, and, I, and I embedded his film. I put his film right there in our story today, so you know you don't have to take my word for it. You can go view it yourself. Look at his highlight film from this junior season so far. You'll see a lot of plays where, yes, there's pressure coming off the edge or you know thing, in, interior penetration. Uh, his reaction is notable. You know he's able to fluidly extend the play get outside. Defenders, most defenders, especially in the front seven, aren't able to keep up with this speed. Taquan Roberson, uh, you know, running around a 4-7 in the 40-yard dash to this point. So that that's that's really above average speed, especially at the quarterback position. Um, so he can buy time, and then if he chooses to pass the line of scrimmage, get after it and, and go get yards as a runner, certainly capable of that as well. I mentioned at the poll, he's averaging more than six yards per carry. He is the leading rusher there. And that dual threat capability is what has attracted several college programs uh, to take a, a close look at Daquan Roberson, not just Penn State, um, but but Penn State getting in there early enough to make a big impression. I think when you look at his list, certainly the Nittany Lions are, are the team that stands out number two in the country, uh, one of the best offenses in the country as well, and not too far away uh, from his home, 
New Jersey, but you look at his list overall, a couple other Big Ten teams have offered, Maryland, Rutgers. He's got several ACC offers, North Carolina, um, Virginia Tech, Boston College among those, and, and I anticipate more offers may come. I also anticipate you're going to see him rise up in rankings this year. If you look at recruiting rankings, he's con- currently labeled a three-star prospect, uh, but as members of our industry, get this tape in front of them, get to review a little bit about what he did and assess his junior season, which again has been a big leap for him as a full-time starter, and he has delivered categorically down the line exactly what you'd expect from a blue chip recruit. So I do think you're going to see him rise, maybe a a four-star guy when all is said and done and the dust settles. But right now I think you don't worry about the recruiting rankings. You're looking at how you project a player to be, and I think this is an ideal fit for Penn State's offensive system uh, you know, their RPO system they run, uh, you know, where, where you have a quarterback who is essentially charged with the task to be an extension of the coaching staff, an extension of the offensive coordinator, and being able to read and have the option uh, to run or pass. And he's got to make these decisions quickly. This isn't a, you know, there isn't a lot of time when you've got 300 pounders barreling in on you and you've got a safety with four or five speed blitzing off the edge. These are decisions that need to be made quickly. We've seen Trace McSorley excel at that against Michigan. It was a big reason why they were able to get uh, such a big advantage over Michigan offensively is because McSorley played a tremendous RPO game against that Wolverines defense, which is a really swarming, aggressive defense. No match for the RPO when it was sharp. So to Quan Roberson, long term, I think he can do this. If, if you look at his film again, there's a lot of plays where you'll see him extend the football to the running back initially then tuck it, run, and, and he does it well. You know, it's a smooth, it, it's not robotic. It's a nice smooth, uh, the, the the option that he runs, I mean, it, he he sells it well is what I'm trying to say. He, he has a good feel. Uh, that he can potentially one day uh, man the ship. Uh, now, what does this mean for Penn State's class moving forward? Uh, well, I will tell you, uh, you know, and I should also mention, I don't want to shortchange this at all. Roberson has a gun. Roberson can deliver darts, okay? So I don't want to make this sound like this is an athlete playing quarterback. This is an athlete playing quarterback, but he is also a quarterback. He's a quarterback's quarterback. He is able to, um, you know, throw dimes right down the sideline. He's got a nice beat ball, good touch. And as I said, it's not just about his, his, uh, his speed. And I'm telling you, he can serve up some heat on these passes. It's also about what he does, um, you know, beating a linebacker over the top, but also not throwing it to the point where the safety is going to have an easy interception in center field. I just see a lot of traits that I like a lot about Roberson at this level. And he will not be at Penn State, obviously, until 2019. But the development is there. The athleticism is there. And Penn State fans should be very, very excited about this commitment today from 2019 quarterback to Quan Roberson. Now, moving from the individual recruit to the overall recruiting scene for Penn State, in the 2019 uh, class, you know, there's a long way to go here, right? There's a long way to go. Taquan Roberson is number two in this class uh, back on September 9th following the Pittsburgh game. Keaton Ellis, a local cornerback from State College High School, um, you know, stepped up to the plate, became the first Penn State commit for the 2018 class. He's a Nittany Lions legacy. Um, I'm hoping to speak with him shortly, actually, to get a reaction to this commitment. But uh, Keaton Ellis, no longer alone in the 2019 recruiting class as Penn State adds a quarterback. And it's always big, and I've talked about this several times on our show, having a quarterback in place at this time, at this stage of a recruiting cycle is massive because quarterbacks tend to exude the confidence, tend to exude the leadership, because that's what they're charged to do in the huddle. And these are the guys who can rally other recruits to join the class. They can motivate others. And I think when you get some receivers, running backs, um, really anybody on the football field, get Roberson's film in front of them, give them a chance to digest it a little bit. I think they'll walk away saying, that's a guy I want to go into a huddle with. That's a guy I want to go to battle with. So I think, you know, quarterbacks are, are often catalysts, and, and it's big to get one on board right now rather than having to wait into into next year or when you're approaching next season. But I do not think that this is where the buck stops with Penn State on the 2019 quarterback search. Um, let me explain. I think – the anticipation here for Penn State in the 2019 recruiting class, as I wrote today in our recruiting mailbag and as I wrote today in my reactionary piece about Roberson's commitment, the expectation for me is that Penn State is going to pursue a two-quarterback class. Now, the Lions quarterback room in 2019 looks like this. 
Trace McSorley is gone. Uh, you know, fighting to make his name in the NFL at that point. Tommy Stevens would be uh, finally getting a shot, you'd think. Uh, and, and this is under the assumption that McSorley comes back next year. And, and Stevens comes back, and, he, and he's willing to wait it out and continue to, to be number two and also be a utility guy in offense. These are obviously a lot of what-ifs, so I should put the disclaimer. College football rosters always fluctuating. The new grad transfers make things complicated. Never know how things are going to shape out with injuries. But just knowing what we know now, here's what it looks like in 2019. McSorley's gone. Stevens is a starter. He's a fifth-year player with Penn State. Looking to make the biggest impact he can, become an NFL prospect, and, and really have a big season as a redshirt senior. But beyond Tommy Stevens, then, you're working with Sean Clifford, who at that point would be in his third year with the program. He, he beat out Jake Zembach for the number three job this year during his first training camp. I'm a big fan of Sean Clifford. I think he's a guy that's going to continue to develop and get better. He's clearly bought into this team, and I can tell the teammates, coaches, have really liked what they see from Sean Clifford so far. So we're talking in 2019, he would be, you would expect a redshirt sophomore, which is the same age uh, and same grade that you see Tommy Stevens in right now. So Stevens, you would anticipate as a starter, Clifford as the man in waiting. And then with Jake Zembeck, as I mentioned, he was beat out, um, you know, he was beat out by Clifford for the job this year, the number three job. There's been a lot of, you know, people have been asking, is, is Jake Zembeck going to be a long-term guy with this program? And is he going to look to make a move? And from what I've seen, in my career across college football, not just here in the locker room at Penn State, not you know, I, I don't have a, a strong read on Jake Zembach. I don't know what his and his family are thinking. But what I've seen in college football when situations play out like this, more often than not, you'll see someone in Jake's position pursue another opportunity uh, by transferring to another school, which opens up a scholarship spot and a, and a room in that quarterback room. We'll see how it shakes out. But for the purposes of this conversation, let's say Clifford is the – the next guy behind Stevens. And then you got Will Levis, who's coming in this year um, or next year as a 2018 commit. So that would be, you know, three guys, you know, and, and Franklin always says you want a definitive starter. You want another guy who you know can start. So basically two starters. I think they could have that with Stevens and Clifford. And then you want a developmental guy. He's, you know, Franklin's always said you want two guys, you know, you can win with, and you want a developmental guy getting better behind them. So at that point you could have, you know, McSor or, I'm sorry, Stevens and Clifford as those two guys you, you feel confident in being able to play now. You have Will Levis, who in 2019 would presumably be a redshirt freshman. I think he's got some development to, to go through here in the next few years. So he's your developmental guy. And then you throw into the mix another two quarterbacks in 2019. I think that's how I see the scenario playing out. But again, it's a winding road in college football, so the rosters could change. I just see uh, Garrett Schrader, who I mentioned before, as a target who's not going anywhere. I think you leave him up on the target board, six foot five, two hundred pounds, a guy who can also run extremely well and navigate downfield as a rusher very well. I think he's averaging about eight nine yards a carry this season. He's over a thousand rushing yards in, in a season and a half as a starter at Charlotte Christian in North Carolina. So I think Garrett Schrader continues to be a name to know. I, I do feel firmly that he, Penn State is. At the top, if not in the cluster of top groups for him right now, going to be interesting to see how the presence of Roberson in this class will maybe change that or, or at least alter his view of the opportunity. We'll find that out as things progress, and that'll certainly be a storyline worth watching. It always is when you have a two-quarterback class or you're trying to build a two-quarterback class. No one considers themselves number two in a two-quarterback class. Both of them ultimately think they're going to win that job. I've seen it play out in different parts of the country. Saw it happen at USC a few years ago. A big-time five-star recruit named Ricky Town signed, uh, was committed. And then a, a late commit, pretty unknown kid, this kind of goofy redhead named Sam Darnold committed to the class. They ended up with two players. The five-star Ricky Town was out of the picture before his first season, and Sam Darnold suddenly emerged as this you know, hyped-up Heisman Trophy candidate, Rose Bowl performance. And, and so you never know how these two quarterback classes will play out. But I think it's something to monitor for Penn State moving ahead. Um, so Taquan Roberson, commitment number two for Penn State, not sure he'll be the last quarterback in this class. And now you shift gear and, and begin to look at other positions. And, uh, you know, there's going to be, I think, a domino effect here. I think the momentum that Penn State will carry, and if they can cruise past uh, the Buckeyes in Columbus, I think you're going to continue to see good things happen for this 2019 class. And I said this last night on our Facebook Live show, which you can join us every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. here on Land of 10. You can – expect potentially four, five commitments in this 2019 class, in my opinion, by the end of Penn State's 
regular season. I think when we're getting into December, you know, before bowl season even, I think you may be looking at a four, five, six player class in this 2019 group, and that would be a tremendous start for James Franklin. And they have been really particular about who they target. You look at their offer list right now, it's elite players. They are not extending players that they are on the fence about. They are not pursuing guys that, uh, you know, that maybe are a step below others. They are really trying to attack the cream of the crop in the 2019 recruiting class nationwide. You know, they've got one offer out to a Pennsylvania prospect. All the other offers are out beyond state borders. The one guy who got an offer in Pennsylvania who's a high school junior is Keaton Ellis. He already committed. So that tells you Penn's, uh, Penn State is laser focused on trying to assert themselves as a national brand on the recruiting trail. Uh, another huge pickup from New Jersey added to the list, Justin Shorter, uh, you know, Kasicki, Jawan Johnson, Irvin Charles, Gonzalez, Will Fries. They've been big in New Jersey, and this is another example of that happening. Uh, so there you have it, Tyler Donahue. If you missed any uh, of our conversation today, uh, happy to, to take, take you back for a look. All you got to do is uh, you know, look on Facebook here, and it will be recorded. You can fast forward. You can rewind. You can pick where you – if you already saw part of this, you can go to the other part. If you want to watch it all over again for another detailed explanation – do that too. Uh, but for now, Tyler Donahue, encouraging you to check out all of our content on Land of 10, Penn State football. Huge season, huge recruiting time for Penn State, and uh, they continue to roll in the right direction. Um, so check out all of our content. Recruiting Notebook coming up tonight at 720. Recruiting Mailbag was out at 3 o'clock. And uh, me and my Ohio State colleague, Jeremy Birmingham, have a fun piece that just dropped about Ohio State and Penn State recruiting battles in the 2018 recruiting cycle. There's many of them. So a ton of recruiting content across the board. We've got you covered on game day on Saturday. And uh, we hope you always lock in when it comes down to Penn State news right here, Land of 10. Happy to be with you. Tyler Donahue. And enjoy your Thursday.